Hi, and welcome back to On Track. I'm your host, Patrick Murphy. Hi, and welcome to On Track. I'm your host, Patrick Murphy, and today we're here with Laura Joy. So, Laura, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm a singer-songwriter from the Chicago area. Um, I tour nationally, and I, that's what I do for a living. Wonderful. Yeah. So, can you tell us a little bit how you got started in music? Like, when did you start playing? How you got into it? That kind of stuff. I started playing music um, pretty young, but guitar wasn't taken up until college. Um, but I was very into singing from a young age, so even just like third, fourth grade. Did a lot of choir and then started writing songs in college. There you go. Now, how did you two meet? How did we meet, Laura? It was a blind date, you guys. <laughs> a blind, blind date. date. Yeah, that's it. Huh. Right, yep. and uh, we actually started um, hanging out and getting to know one another before we even necessarily decided that we wanted to play together. In fact, when I first met her, I did not know she was a musician. So that was We try to keep such things lucky, quiet initially it's for first impressions. Yes. A lucky connect. Yeah. And so we hung out for about six months and then we decided maybe we should try making music together and it worked out pretty well. So we're going on five years. Well, there you go. Yeah. So uh, how would you describe the music you play? Like what genre would it fall under? I'm calling it acoustic pop because it's, I mean, it's not folk. It's it, but it's definitely acoustic, so that's how we're putting it in there. And if it had um, uh, my full band behind me, it sounds definitely more more like pop music than just the guitars. But Dave's electric definitely adds a little bit more to that. Now, what do you think most of your sound comes from? Like, what influences your music? My music is influenced by a lot of older artists, maybe ones that are up on these posters right now behind us. Um, I like. Uh, Jackson Brown, Fleetwood Mac, um, 90s Jewel, I like Jewel back in the day. Um, so, but I also have a lot of influences just in the community at large, the music community in Chicago and such. We all write, I have a number of friends who write together and we give each other feedback and stuff and that's been kind of cool too. So what kind of music do you both uh, listen to on your own in your free time? Oh brother. I'm definitely all over the place. So um, actually when I was in music school, I played and studied a lot of jazz music. And in general, I would say a lot of groups um, that are older or, or um, more classic. You know, I draw on some of the more classic bands just for, just for fun. But to be honest, it's across the board. In fact, just the other day, I discovered um, some interesting uh, French musicians from the late uh, 19th century to early 20th century and utilizing instruments that um, I'd never uh, known to, to have existed. <laughs> um, and so listening to a lot of concert music that way um, and, you know, whatever, whatever is f flowing, in, in, in fact, uh, a lot of lute music from the Baroque era has been um, something fun this past winter. So it's really kind of across the board. Yeah. Cool. Well, there you go. <laughs> now, you guys said you've been playing together for almost like five years. Yeah. What's one of the most interesting stories or funniest things that's happened while you guys were together performing? What, what comes to mind, Dave? I'm, I'm sorry, the question again? For the, for the most interesting, funny thing that's happened for us while playing music. Oh. You getting anything? Hmm. Nothing offhand. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm not sure if anything too too exciting has happened lately on the on the spot. I should have prepped prepped a story. I wasn't thinking about that. Sure. Um, I think that the the f the best thing is that we play um, when we've got the drummer. That's his twin brother. So that's kind of a gimmick. <laughs> no, okay. no, he's a great he's a great drummer, and having the twin connection during music is 
-hmm. kind of like, you know, Brandy Carlisle, I think, does the same thing. So I think that's pretty cool to have that in common. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, we, we've traveled a fair amount around the country, so um, we really enjoy each other's company and uh, really no drama necessarily. It's just a lot of fun exploring new places and we have a lot of just awesome memories of, of uh, time we've played <laughs> music together. Well, there you go. <laughs> now, can you just introduce uh, your first song to us a little bit? Yeah. My first song is called Lizzie, and it's a song about um, a painter and his model. And that is just what happened between them, which was, you know, kind of sad. Didn't, didn't work out too well, but that's typical unrequited love between artists. All right. Yes. Wonderful. Now, we'll have a listen to Lizzie. Since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Nope. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around ten thousand dollars in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom. That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Jimmy can't sing, and Tommy can't dance. So we're, we're gonna, gonna put, put some hands in their pants. Aww. Aww. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants. They got ants in their pants. They got ants in their pants. 
Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Hi, and welcome back to On Track. I'm your host, Patrick Murphy, and today we have Laura Joy with us. So, could you guys um, tell me, at what point in your life did you realize music is what you wanted to do? For me, it was much later. I was more into writing, so probably um, maybe in my early 20s, I was realizing I was pretty super into it, but uh, Dave here has yeah, been... So for me, it's been a passion since I've been, I've been about 10 years old, so it's basically all I knew I wanted to do, so it was easy, easy decision. And you both mm -hmm. are guitar players. Can you tell me a little bit how you got started with that? Did you consider any other instruments at any time? I would consider banjo. I would love to go to that. Um, I picked guitar because I didn't like piano, and that isn't anything against piano. It's that I had two or three terrifying teachers at a young age, and it sort of just kept me from going back to that instrument. And um, the guitar is easily portable, so I don't have to worry about bringing a keyboard everywhere, which is really kind of important when you're traveling a lot. Right. Um, I am a fan of most string instruments, so uh, I actually have a mandolin that I'm, I'm starting to play a little bit more regularly now, and um, that's, that's, that's about it for, for the moment. You play a little bass sometimes. Well, a little bit of bass, but it, you know, primarily guitar and, and mandolin I'm starting to get into now. So. So we touched on this a little bit beforehand, but with your music writing process, how do you, where do your lyrics come from? How do you, do you guys come up with your own tunes, that kind of stuff? Can you talk yeah. about that? Yeah. Um, we actually haven't collaborated yet. Um, Dave has a lot of really great ideas, and we definitely want to write some songs together, and I think that'll probably happen before the year is out. But as far as my own inspirations and how things happen, I'd say lately the music's been coming first and then the lyrics come later and it's pretty much a separate process um, and then I bring it together and mold each one so it fits so that's how that works it's not a simultaneous I know there are other artists who just it comes all together for them I am not one of those people unfortunately it's nice when it happens mm -hmm. but it's rare yeah so um, can you describe how uh, you in, you first started with your singing uh, can you like describe your singing style? My singing style, it's not very loud, I guess. I'm not a belter. I think that's just kind of, I just, I'm not a very loud person. So I try to sing like I talk because I think that's more authentic to who I am and how I want to portray my music. Understandably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, can you uh, describe uh, the next couple songs we're about to hear? Yeah, the next song is called Midwest Midwinter, or ri no, it's actually called Radio. Is it? Where am I at? I'm sorry. Radio. That's what I want to do. Radio. Yeah. So Radio is a song about waiting for winter in Chicago. And then that's why I got mixed up, because I also want to do this Midwest Midwinter song, which is right after it. Another winter song that I wrote in the middle of February about just how you kind of feel sad. It's a sad song, but there's hope in it, so that works. Yeah. All right, we'll give those two songs a listen. Thank you. 
sun is skinny in February, the clouds are growing close. The blue plows trace the streets at sundown, bracing for the snow. Midwest, midwinter I confide in my young stillness and sweet sunrise so pretty so polite don't you lie to me oh don't you lie February of roses and balloons. Saturn with his rings to spare proposes to the moon. Midwest, midwinter, I can find in my young stillness and your sweet sunrise. Pretty so polite, don't you lie to me, oh, don't you lie. It's hard to listen in February, the wind is so darn loud. By the time the sun goes down, you're tired of the sound. Midwest, midwinter, I can fight in your stillness and your sweet sunrise. So pretty, 
so polite, don't you lie to me, oh. You've been wrong, make it right, don't you lie to me, oh. Don't you lie. Don't you lie. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. You're doing great. Let's just, we're gonna try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button to see. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep, keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Welcome back to On Track. I'm your host, Patrick Murphy, and today we have Laura Joy and Dave Gallagher. So can you guys uh, maybe think of what has been the biggest challenge for you as a group? Honestly, you want to be honest? Money. Money is a challenge. Art and money, those things, bringing them together, that's the challenge. So that's, and also just um, booking takes a lot of energy. Um, since I don't have a booking agent, I don't have a manager, I am doing everything myself, which is not an uncommon tale amongst our types, but I'm definitely open to some help at this point because I'd like to focus on writing and practicing a little bit more. It takes a lot of time. And then Dave also. Well, I was going to say it also takes a lot of time and energy in the event that you tour and, you know, you have other um, other uh, musical experiences that you have to coordinate with that it, it's it, it, that's a little bit challenging at times the energy management is is interesting so yeah. yeah you mean you mean keeping it up sure yeah keeping up your energy especially if we're driving eight hours great distances do a three hour a show it's not a good choice you have to learn these things what what choices are good what's realistic right <laughs> sure so uh, can you tell us where we can find you online yeah, you can find me at laurajoymusic.com, or if you're on to all the social medias, I've got Instagram, Laura Joy Music. I have Facebook, Laura Joy. Laura Joy Music is everything. So just search. I branded it completely. So just Laura Joy Music. Anything you want, I'm there. I'm there. Cool. Yeah. And can you give us a, a little update to what upcoming projects you might be working on? Yeah, I just released one album and I'm gonna do another one that should be out in late summer for 2018. Um, so looking forward to that. That'll be with the full band. The other one that was just released is more just me and Dave. So two flavors. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, so can you give us a brief overview of the last song for us? The last song, I live in an apartment with a lot of loud people and the first line is, look at all these pictures, baby, let's shake them off the walls. And that is because there is a lot of vibration throughout the whole building. And that's kind of what inspired the song to start, but then I took it elsewhere. As things often happen, you just go with the flow and it, it went into a more of a lovey-dovey spot. So that's what Into Your Arms is about. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now let's have a listen to Into Your Arms.
side into your arms into your loving arms into your loving arms hey, 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 hey. Thanks for watching On Track and a special thanks to Laura Joy and Dave Gallinger. We'll see you next time.